Hi, this is Russ Anderson. In this tutorial, we're going to take a look at how you can straighten out the path of the camera if it was shot on a dolly and you're confident that the dolly track was in fact truly straight. So this is a way to really jam it and make it exactly straight using one of the phases in Synthize. So here's our shot. It's down low to the ground on a dolly. You might envision a small gecko, say, walking down the street here or whatever. So we'll just start out with a uh, quick auto track here. And you'll notice we've got a auto place as well. So there's our path. And, you know, it's, it's pretty straight. Let's go over here to the graph editor. And we'll look at just the rotation part of this. We'll turn off some of the other stuff. And here are the different components of the velocity of the camera moving down the track. And you can see that there's a bit of jitter and you know, it wanders off a little bit there. So if we want to make it exactly straight, how can we go and do that? And let's just, uh, let's You know, if we look at it from a top view, you can see that it is jittering back and forth a little. And that's what we might want to take out. So we're going to do that using the phase editor. So let's start out with a clean start phase here. And we're going to then go and have a solve phase. One thing we'll do also, we're going to hit click the unlock trackers, and we'll let this auto place keep on auto placing each time for the heck of it. And after the solve, we want to go and go out on the edit menu. Here is linearize path. So we're going to drop that into place. And what this does is forces the camera path to be a straight line across a designated range of frames. Here it's the entire range of the shot, so we can cancel the two blends. But this straight line doesn't have to be aligned with the coordinate systems at all. So this can be any arbitrary straight line, and it can be just for a portion of the shot. So if we go and do that now, and run that, and we go look back in the graph editor, you'll see that our uh, x, y, and z have changed. Let's just undo. There's what it was. If we redo, here's what we have now. And you'll see that really not too much has happened in this x direction while the Y and Z have been flattened out quite dramatically, as, as we expected. So why is this not, not changed? And the answer to that is, is simple, that we've gone and made the camera travel along a straight path, but there's nothing that says that it moves at exactly the same speed the entire period of time. And that that, in fact, is, is you know, difficult to impossible to do if you try and do it in the real world. So we don't want to try and force the camera to be traveling at a exactly constant speed. That would be what having this value be a single constant would mean. So instead, we're saying that the camera is moving mostly along the x-axis, and it's moving with a little bit of, of jitter and bounce as it goes along, and you know, sure enough, it's moving, you know, a little slower at the beginning and a little faster at the end. And the other coordinate axes have been flattened out in the perpendicular directions 
to the main part of this motion. So that's just so you understand what you're going to see. You're going to still see some jitter on the one axis as well as changes in the value and that's what you want and that's what you need to have and you'll see when you do it with some real shots you'll see that the velocity you know somebody pushing a camera down a track it's just it's just not a super exact science even if you get the track straight you're still going to be moving along the track at different speeds so now let's look at at one of the consequences of what we've done we've just changed the camera path but we haven't done anything to the rest of the scene. So the, the rest of the camera solution, the rotational axes, now is somewhat off because we've changed one thing without adjusting the rest of it. So what we want to do is go and adjust the rest of the solve to reflect the fact that we've now set up something that exactly straightens out the camera path. So what we want to do is add some path locks to this and sorry this goes down off the bottom here so these path locks are basically going to be doing the same thing as we we would do manually using the hard and soft lock control panel so we're adding path locks we're basically turning on in this case, the position, the three position uh, axes are being locked, and uh, just by default, the rotation ones are not, though this phase can be used to, to adjust any of these different axes on command. And one of the things that we're going to do is tell it that we want to copy the solved path that we've gotten so far. The solved path is coming out of the output of the linear eyes and we want to make that be the seed because we're now going to go and add another solve. So we're going to resolve the seed with this modified path. So we want this solve to, to be using constraints and those constraints need to come in on that seed path. To do that we tell this add path locks phase that we want to copy from the solve path coming in and put that same data out on the seed path. So that's what that checkbox is going to do. We've added path locks across the entire range. And the other thing that we would like to do here, we need to set the solver mode just to avoid resolving it we can uh, set the solver mode just to refine. Here in the solve now, we don't want to auto place again. We do want to have the constraints turned on because we want to actually make those constraints coming in be part of the solution rather than a after effect here. So we turn off the post align part of this also. So now what we've got is a configuration that's going to go solve the scene once, straighten out the path, add locks to keep on using that same path, go to refine mode, and now resolve the scene with that modified path. So we can just go and run that and Synthize runs through that whole little chain of phases. It didn't, didn't have to redo the solve at the beginning. Um, and there we go. So in this kind of a shot, you've got a whole bunch of things going on. It's nice sometimes to be able to go and take a look. So I'll point out that the output of all of those phases is available here in the graph editor. So we can go, you know, the final output is phase 5. So we can go over to the graph editor, we can go to phase 5, look at the cameras, and verify that here in fact we are seeing the smoothed out version of the path. 
if we go and we look, here is our original with phase two. If we look in phase two, there was the original for for that was for what was coming in. So we have all of those different stages here available in the graph editor. So we can take a look. If you go through, you can see the locks getting turned on by the uh, add lock phase and so on. So all that data is there as a diagnostic tool to help you understand exactly what it is that you're doing with all of this. So hopefully that gives you an idea of some of the power of the synthize phase technology and gives you an idea of, of something that you can do in a very practical situation. Just to urge you to consider exactly whether the track was straight before you go and start scrunching your solves to make them all exactly straight and so on. So, you know, the real world does have bounces in the tracks and so on. And perhaps you need to set up, you know, only one part of the track is straight or whatever. So, it's a nice tool, and uh, go ahead and have fun enjoying it. I'd like to add one other note to this tutorial that has to do with the set of phases that we've set up. Now we've added path locks and we've changed the solver mode down here in the latter stages of the solve for the benefit of this second solve. If we go and we resolve this entire scene from scratch, we need to make sure that this solve sees the same exact settings that it did originally. Now the clean start up here only adjusts a certain number of the settings. Some of these other ones we need to go and add some additional phases and really it's generally the same phase but just configured back to undo and you know eliminate what that phase is added later. So here instead of adding path locks down here at the beginning I'm clearing those path locks out. Because basically once when you solve the scene from scratch a second time it's basically as if this final output here is being routed back up to the input up here. So the things that we've added here we go and clear back out. So similarly there's the solver mode here. So we'll just go and add a solver mode and this particular one defaults back to the automatic here already. So now we've just set up a kind of more reliable sort of phase structure so that if you come back to this scene after a couple of months or want to move it to a different scene, you'll get the same sort of thing again when you run it because it's starting out from a fully clean initial condition. So that's just something to keep in mind as you set up these phase pipelines. Enjoy.